Alright, what's up guys? It's me, page 329 and we are back. Uh, the options are all set still. We're all good. Yeah, I think we're all still good. Let's load the game. Back here. Alright guys, what's up guys? We're playing First Snow again. Uh, so yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Um, I'm going, I'm recording this before I have to stream, because right now it's about 9. Oh, I probably should have streamed first. It's okay. I like streaming at nighttime just because I have more free reign to do things because it's nighttime. Anyways, as I collapse onto the couch and settle in, the deafening sounds of silence rushes in. The odd passing car from the street below the apartment only highlights the quiet of the room. I love this game, by the way. This game is pretty cool. Plucking my phone from my pocket after dropping my bag on the cushion behind me, I take quick note of the time. I guess Rose got stuck in traffic. An annoying train of thought starts up once again as I put it away. One that's crept up on me occasionally ever since moving out. Just waiting for when nothing's around to distract me. I can cope with the schoolwork easily enough. It's mostly just review right now. People like Caprice might be a handful, but they do liven up the day's routine. It's a fair distance to campus from here, but the walk helps keep me fit. The silence that I can't deal with. Grabbing the remote and flicking on the television at least provides some background noise, but it's no replacement for the sounds of home. That is definitely background noise. There's no motherly, there, there's no mother busying herself over the cooking pot to welcome me home and ask how my day was. No excitable other brothers fighting about this silly thing or that. No father for me to happily see come home from work. It's just me now. My fingers roll over the screen uh, in thoughts as it brings up the lock screen, mindlessly tracing out the cracks in the bottom corner. I could easily call them right now. My mom and dad both made it clear I can ring any time at all. Oh, by the way, just to, um, just to say I'm moving. I don't know if I want to do it before my birthday or after my birthday, but I'm going to be living with my dad. It's pretty cool. So... Yeah, it's going to be really interesting just not living with my mom and, like, my brothers and stuff. Uh, basically, the only reason why I'm going to live with my dad is because it's somewhere other than here. This is just a new environment is what I feel like I need. It's just something new and different and interesting because moving to a bigger city, which has a lot more things to do. Although COVID is, like, here. But, I mean, I don't go out anyways. But if I did, if I were to go out, it would be interesting and new and exciting. So, yeah, my fingers roll over the screen, though it bring Okay, I can call it, I can read them anytime, yeah. But as I stare at the screen, I a deep apathy strikes me before college. I thought that with my family and old friends just a phone call away, nothing would feel all that different. Maybe I just couldn't admit to myself how big of a change this would really be. Admitting defeat, the phone ends up on the couch beside me and has watched television. The news is interesting today, so at least it's some distraction from all this. Just when I thought I'd f finally found a friend or two in college, it ends up being a mess. Why do people have to be so complicated? As the door behind me opens, I close my thoughts on the subject. There's no point in mulling, over, mulling things over my, any further. Art matters. Ooh, I should have. I should have continued onwards. Now it feels weird that we're starting Act One in the middle of a. Mm. It's whatever. Ooh, that's fucking cool. I love that. I love that. It's dope. Uh, the Saturday's morning air is brisk as I stagger back from the supermarket, hands full of bags. The apartment itself may be nothing to write home about, but it's certainly a good location. I still don't feel like I've been pulling my weight when it comes to daily life with Rose, but at least I can help with errands like groceries. Her attempts to teach me handiwork skills has been less successful. Even this much has been a learning experience. My parents usually doing the shopping back when I lived with them. Reaching the apartment, I find Rose crouched outside and working on her motorbike. She looks perfectly content as she whiles away her time with tools spread around her, as if a child happily playing with her favorite toys. 
Fuck, who is that? Oh, that's me. Working working on the bike again, Ale again? <coughs> oh, fuck. Hmm? Oh, hey, that was quick. She leaves herself... Uh, by the way, I forgot the voices for these characters. She level she she levers herself up with a grunt before pulling back the edge of one bag with a finger to peer in. Then another, I am a little worried as she checks over my work. Having to hold my breath as she doesn't as she does isn't exactly helping. I'm still not used to the archaic smell of her smoking, but maybe that's a good thing. Good work. Everything we need. No wired weird impulse buzz. Did we need more window cleaner though? Oh, this is, this is, okay, this is, this is my own. Uh, good work. What fucking voice did I have for her? She's a biker smoker girl. Okay, biker smoker girl. I gotta channel my inner biker smoker girl. Good work, everything we need. And no weird impulse buys. That's kind of valley girl, or not valley guy, but like country girl, but it's okay. Did we need more window cleaner though? You said grab necessities. If they're on sale, and don't spoil, right? You're learning. Could you help me down here once you put everything away? I need another set of hands. Without anything in particular, planning for today, I, w I agreed before heading inside. The rickety stairs creak as I slowly head up, the he head up with groceries in hand, fumbling with the door, door handle. My arms are thankful for the relief once I manage to drop the bags in the apartment after opening the door. Opening the fridge, I get to work stuffing in the frozen and cold items first. Next, I open the cabinet doors and start labeling, uh, uh, yeah, labeling in the cans and boxes. La laddie ling, la ladle ling, ladle. I don't know what word that is, guys. Ladle ling, I think, in the cans and boxes. By the way, I know, I don't know a lot of words. There's a lot of words during out these, these, these games that I play that I don't know. Uh, I do want to address that. I'm an idiot. Uh, I was always terrible in English and yeah, I don't know why I decided to make a career on playing, um, visual novels, <laughs> but I am trying to at least, uh, starting the cans of boxes. Uh, as the empty shelves fill, I get an odd sense of satisfaction from caring for myself. Living as an adult is busy work, but it's rewarding in, in its own way. There's an odd and unexpected feeling of accomplishment from doing even simple tasks. I'm sure it'll wear off in time, but I'm holding on to it for now. With the job done, I close the cabinets and get back up to look about the room. The apartment is barely any warmer inside than out. I suppose there are downsides as well as upsides. Putting it out of my mind as best I can, I head back down to Rose. Slipping back outside and closing the door behind me, familiar clangs and bangs carry on the air as Rose still works away. Passing a rag would pass a rag, would you? I quietly take a seat near or here on a patch cleared of snow, grabbing one of the turn up pieces of old skirt and handing it to her. She seems to be cleaning out some part of the engine or another. Anything interesting happening at Sko? Not really. The schoolwork isn't too hard for our heart so far. A friend wants to start a club. A club, huh? That's cool. Which kind? An art club. Apparently, I'm not really sold on it, though. I need to study, and she basically came up with the whole idea by herself. Rose passes the rag back and puts the part in place, motioning for me to hold it while she wrenches it back in. After a few grunts, the job appears to be done, and she puts the wrench down with a clunk and turns back toward me. Life's not about studying. I know you were a teacher's pet back in high school, but you could start to be a little bit, uh, be a bit more social. So, so it's this again. This is another downside of living here. With so much of my time spent alone with Rose, there's better or worse no easy way of escape to escape her questioning well to be fair you need to balance it i never went to college because it's not for me i might still go back to college but i don't know if i'm gonna be honest so yeah it's not it's, yeah it's interesting but yeah basically 
there's a balance. I have friends that do nothing but party and their grades suffer. Then I have friends that do nothing but, you know, they're, they're, they're scored, but they never have fun. You have to have a balance to it and you need to be able to both, you know, spend time doing your work like you're supposed to because you're there at school and not waste money <laughs> and then to, you know, party and have fun. Also, um, just another side thing. Don't let people pressure you into like going to parties. Uh, parties aren't everyone's thing. Definitely not, not my thing. I uh, had some, not really issues, but I uh, tend to go with the flow. So whenever we're at like a, like an in party or like a together party with like all my friends, then um, you know this guy is like, oh, I want to go to bed. You know, you guys leave my house. Then we go to another party. Which is something I don't really like doing because I like just sticking with my friends. So we go to another party and there's people I don't know and I'm always just like odd and stuff. So yeah, balance. Don't let yourself be pressured into doing things that you shouldn't do. Peer pressure is bad. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to offer life advice. How old am I? 20? What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I, don't have enough, I don't have enough experience in my life to offer life advice. I don't know. I'm a weirdo. I don't know. I do like this game, though. No easy way to escape her questioning. Yeah. I know she has my best interest in mind, though. I'm glad to have someone around to help me get to grips with adult life. Even if I did find her intimidating at first. She's very intimidating. What was your college life like? Never had the chance to go. I'm left a little surprised as she gets back to her bike. I've only known Rose for a couple of months now, so I'm finding out new things about her all the time. Maybe you get maybe you get why I'm I'm on your case about this stuff. Maybe maybe you get why I'm on your case about this stuff now. Not everyone gets the chance you have, so make the most of it. Go to parties, get some friends, and find a boyfriend sometime. Even if it doesn't last, it'll be a start. My family always pushed me to put such things aside and focus on my education, so that's what I did. And simplest, sim simplicity in, of life back then suited me just fine, and it worked out well going by my scholarship. I was never really interested in boys because I was so caught up in learning, is what I like to say, but I'm honest enough with myself to know that's not the whole story. I'm actually a lesbian. Seeing Ellen, say seeing Ellen, Ellen. Fuck! What? 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 What name was that? Seeing seeing Ellen, Ellen. Seeing Ellen last week reminded me of that. Women are her keep. Women like her keep catching my eye, and then there was that painting of hers. As time goes on, that difference in what I like looking at gets harder and harder to explain. Explain away. Rag, Allison, Rag. Allison? I hastily place place a rag in her outstretched hand. I was using it to try and rub some of the oil and grease off her hands. I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I'm not straight if that's truly the case. Well, I'd like to talk with her about it. I can never quite seem to find the right time. <clears throat> <clears throat> you are right? Yeah, I was just thinking about how life is complicated. Sure is. Hey, you brought that ice cream I asked asked for while you were out? It's in the freezer now. Why? How about we have some? Could use a treat after working all morning on this. She has strange ideas about what makes a good dessert in the cold of winter, but I'm not going to stop her. Right, don't their um don't their heaters not work? As the two of us start packing go up, another peaceful day rolls by. Good. A loud yawn from Rose em em emanates from the couch. The droning of the television briefly overshadowed the only other sound in the coffee pot boiling away from the kitchen, punctured by the occasional passing car. Only half awake and still aching on autopilot, I lazily wipe the sleep from my eyes as I stagger toward the door. The smell of Rose toast wafts uh, invitingly through the air, making me envious of her late start to work. <clears throat> I let out a loud yawn before I can strife, uh, stifle it, causing Rose to look over from the couch.
Wow, you look like hell. <laughs> Thank you. Stay up too late playing on your phone or something? Doesn't look like you got an hour of sleep. Well, Rose is less than tactful about this. It's true that I shouldn't be so tired. I'm usually a morning person, but right now I can barely remember where I even put my phone. Rose picks herself up from the couch as she finishes her breakfast. Um, brushing toast crumbs off herself as she starts towards the kitchen. Just the neighbors being loud again. I'm surprised you didn't hear them. Oh, just the neighbors being loud again. I'm surprised you didn't hear them. I may say that, but it's hardly any real shock. She sleeps like a log, which I've always been jealous about. Rose puts down the plate in her hand, giving the matter more thought than I'd intended. The ones above us, right? Man, I'm sick of them. I'll go have a talk to them later today and get them to knock it off. Making a racket during the day is one thing, but the night's another. You don't have to do that. They might be quiet from now on, anyway. She looks surprisingly disappointed at my attempts to wave off her concern. You have to stand up for yourself sometimes, Allison. Waiting for things to blow over ain't always gonna work. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, that's funny. Because I'd never stand up for myself. <laughs> Which is why I get dragged along doing stupid things. Which is exactly the opposite of the, the advice I told you earlier. <laughs> uh, I wind up rubbing my neck to avoid outright answering. Apparently dropping the topic, she sighs and disappears into the kitchen after taking her plate again. I just don't want to cause a fuss, especially on my behalf. Is that really so bad? With time rolling by, I glance about and, to see, and see my phone on the count on the corner of the table. Sli um, slipping it- why can't I talk? Slipping it into my coat pocket, I skip over and grab my bag sitting on the door. As I stretch out a bit to try and wake myself up, before facing the cold outside, Rose calls out from behind me. Turning to see her shows a fist full of crumpled dollar bills in her hand thrust out towards me. Here, go buy yourself an espresso or something on the way. It's fine, you don't have to. Just take it, you look awful. It really does have a way with words. <laughs> I reluctantly take the cash and slip it into my pocket, thanking Rose as I leave. As soon as I get out the door, the weather hits me. Looks like it's going to be a harsh winter this year, with the cold of the snow dumping down and being, being made all the, all the worse by the chilly fog hanging in the air. Twisting my head to and fro to bury it in, the, in my scarf a little better, I set off down the road with hands firmly lodged into my coat pockets. There doesn't there don't seem to be many people around that that are braving the weather not that i blame them as a muffled sound of snow under tires rings out a garbage truck rustles rumbles by it's only after a worry a few seconds that i remember i intend and i i i indeed put the garbage out for collection yesterday reaching the campus the welcoming sight of a cafe nearby lifts my spirits I've overheard students mention the coffee here is good, and it's conveniently right next to this campus. It looks homey. It looks homey enough from the outside, and it only has a handful of people inside. Inside at this hour, as I peer through the window and with the quick brush of the fallen snow off my shoulders a, and back, I take a breath and walk in. A bell above the door rings out as I enter. The smell of coffee on the air, combining with uh, the homely styling inside making for an immediately cozy atmosphere. Joining the couple of people in line, I quickly rehearse the order in my mind to make sure I get it right. The barista's nice, smile toward the other pardons keeps making me trip over myself, and I've never been great in dealing with strangers. That's me. Coming to the front of the line, I manage to blurt out my order of a latte with sugar before I can mess it up. She smiles and takes my payment, leaving me to wait to the side as I as it's prepared. You know what's funny? This is exactly how I am. Um, thank God. Whenever I worked at Staples, there was a uh, McDonald's that was near that would always go to, for lunch. And thank God they had a fucking uh, what you may call it, a kiosk there. They had a kiosk there, so you didn't have to talk to anyone. But there's one time where I was like, you know what? I'm kind of tired of McDonald's, so I went to the nearest. What's it called? Subway. 
and I felt so nervous having to like, because Subway, I wanted to make my own uh, sub, and I didn't know how to how to do that, and I didn't I did not know what to do. I was literally I like stood there, in line. And right whenever I was about to, like, be, like, the next one up, I was, like, thinking in my head, like, what do I order? What do I order? What what should I order? What 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 what, what do I order? Um, t- like, how do, how, how do I do this? How do I do this? Um, and then I left. <laughs> I got so... I don't think I... Did I... I might have actually got a sandwich from there. I don't think I did. I didn't. I think I, I think I walked out. Yeah, I walked out and I didn't eat that. <laughs> I didn't eat anything for lunch that time because I just didn't have. Um, I was too scared. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know how to order. So I. Um, so I walked out. And I went home. Oh yeah, I went back to work right, and as I walked in, um, one of the cashiers. Uh, she asked me, so what did you eat? And I was like, oh, I got a, I got a sandwich from um, from Subway. She's like, oh, which which kind of sandwich you got? <laughs> Obviously, I, I, I lied. <laughs> I didn't get a sandwich from Subway. I didn't want to tell her that I was, like, too nervous to order a sandwich from Subway. <laughs> so I was like, oh, um, it, I, I made my own sandwich. And I was just, she kept pastoring. She was like, oh, what would you put on it? So I was like, oh, I got, um, uh, uh, I just put a bunch of meats on it, you know. Like I put some um some bacon, some pepperonis, some uh uh you know, I just put a bunch of meats on it. It was it was the worst awkward thing. And I was like, Okay, well I'm gonna go in the back and uh and use the rest of my uh my break uh back there just chilling. She's like, Oh, okay, um bye then. I was like, Alright, bye. It's just like she's like, like I'm a fucking loser. God damn it, I couldn't order anything from somewhere. But yeah, that uh that happened. <laughs> And I was very hungry <laughs> during work. Who would have thought? I didn't go and get lunch, and I was very hungry during work. Uh, but I th- uh, actually, I think I, I think I ended up buying uh, chips. I was just so hungry, so I, I went. No, I bought candy because they don't have chips at Staples. Do they have chips at Staples? No, they don't have chips at Staples. They have candy, so I bought candy, and I ate candy while we were working. I also got a Powerade, and I drank some Powerade while we were working as well. It's really cool, really awesome. It was. Uh... <laughs> I need a. I I cannot believe I did that. That's that's so odd that I um that I couldn't order from the place. Uh, but yeah, uh, that happened. Anyways, coming in front of line, I managed to blood up over. Uh, she smiles and takes my payment, leaving me to wait. Uh, wait to the side as it's prepared. I briefly consider having it here, given how relaxing the cafe is. That's before I noticed Capri slowly chatting with the tall man sitting across from her. I'm surprised I didn't notice them. I must really be out of it. As the cute barista slides the coffee cup towards me. I wish we would see this cute barista. Slides the coffee cup towards me. I decide I'd better leave the two in peace and drink outside. Before I can, Caprice catches sight of me and begins excitedly waving her hand in the air. Ellie! Hey! Ellie! Uh, Ellie! Hey, Ellie, over here! Ellie! What fucking voice did I have for her? I knew it was like a hyperactive. I think that was it. <clears throat> oh my god! That's probably it, yeah. So much for that. Coffee in hand, I warily walk over to over to their table and look from one to the other. Uh, morning, Caprice. Um, Wallace. Upon Caprice, moving her backpack off a chair and placing it to the ground, I take a seat. Allison here is a good friend and one of the founding members of the art club. The new art club. This is Caprice's rodeo, so I'm content to let her deal with the club as she wants to un- wants to at this point. It takes me a moment to realize she she referred to me as a good friend in particular. We've only known each other for a couple of months since the semester started, but I'm a little glad she thinks of me like that. I I'm some guy Caprice found. <laughs> He's our fourth member! <laughs> As he sighs forlongly, all I can offer is a 
stifled smile in response. Caprice looked so comfortable dealing with him that I assumed they knew each other already. Come to think of it, Caprice had no problem dealing with Ellie either, despite barely knowing her. I'm impressed at how she can talk to strangers with just the same confidence as friends. Maybe she even considers him one already. So what'd you get? Um, so what'd you get up, uh, uh, up to over the weekend, Ellie? Just housework and errands. I'm surprised how much time I spend on that sort of thing now that I moved out. I get what you mean. Thankfully, I split the work with my roommates. To my roommate, that makes me want to pick up the slack. Caprice looks to Wallace for his input, making him part of the conversation. I look after the family gun shop on weekends. Wow, guns! I look after the family gun shop on the weekends. Nothing glamorous, but enough to get by on. Caprice continues on chatting, mostly with him. Wallace quietly nods along, adding a yeah or I see as needed. <laughs> to um, I get the distant feeling he's being talked at more than being talked to. <laughs> Existential dread. Now that we're both sitting across from each other, I can fully appreciate how much of a bear this the man is, cutting more of a foreboding figure thanks to his beard. I can already feel myself shrinking in response. For want to not stare at him, I turn to the coffee steaming away before him. A flat black flat black black with the lid taken off to let it cool faster. I can taste how bitter it is just by looking at it. The conversation is suddenly interrupted by a phone going off. Can't dance, I'm sorry. Apparently Caprice is as her hand dives um, in, uh, into the front pocket of her hoodie and retrieves it. Wallace uh, and I just look at each uh, look at each other as she wanders off a few steps to take the call. Unsure exactly what to do with herself. It only takes a few seconds before she returns. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Uh, gotta go. Roommates need me. Uh, wait. I'll see you two around. We've got so much more to discuss. I spat. Whoops. With that, she grabs her backpack and skips out into the winter air without another word. Going by her face, I'm more worried about this than she is. Left alone with Wallace, I sip my coffee, coffee for something to do. Glance in his direction. He looks more relieved than anything. She means well. I know she does. Even if Ellie doesn't think so, I just have to keep telling myself that. And now I'm glad I didn't say that. Much as I would like to leap into her, to her defense, she is pushing this awfully hard. If he's trying to start a conversation, I feel I should at least try to reciprocate rather than letting him twist in the wind. So, you and Ellie know each other? He gives a nod after taking a long sip of his coffee. That must be so awfully bitter. We're friends. Met when she was a freshman in high school. Caprice saw us together and made the connection. Oh. She's filed me in on this club business. I'm going to guess you were pulled into it. Something like that. It kind of spiraled out of control. Sorry. Wallace smile simply shrugs. Not the first time clubs have been pull have been pushy about scouting members. I was actually thinking the whole thing might be good for Ellie. For Ellen, her single mindedness is the best and worst trait really. I don't want to say please put up with uh, Ellen, but I'm having trouble working out a better way to word that. She isn't a bad person, just driven. I'm sure you know someone similar. I do shudder. <laughs> I do shudder what her reaction would be to being told she and Caprice are similar in, in any way. I'm still not sure about dealing with her, but it's hard to deny someone worried about a friend. Worried about the friend. Wallace seems con content that he's managed to get this to get his point across. Silence hanging in the air as he knowing as he thoughtfully sips his coffee. It reminds me that I should drink my own before it gets too cold as well. The weather outside is a harsh contrast to the nice atmosphere in here, which might be why more students are starting to file in before classes start. The coffee is nice as well, so maybe I'll make this a regular spot. I can afford to do that. 
or two that is as for my companion i think i'm starting to see him in a better way he's just concerned about his friends maybe he's a gentle giant type who isn't that threatening at all this cup empty as he sits sets it down while it stands back stands back to savor the last of his taste well i've said my piece caprice will probably give up on me but you and ellie are another matter Grace is a good friend. I can handle it. It was nice meeting you, Wallace. I carefully repeat his name to try and engrave into my memory. I have no doubt I'd instantly forget it otherwise. He is perhaps overly hopeful when it comes to the Caprice, though. Thanks. You seem nice, so hopefully Ellen will ease off a bit. He leaves it. He le levers himself off the chair with a grunt, taking the a glance outside before grabbing his scarf and hat once more. head hurts good luck with class oh look at that thanks you too he's on with that he leaves the cafe uh, while sliding past someone coming in tugging through the table winter cold winter going winter outside as he goes with the next class so soon i better finish this coffee off quickly with that in mind i concentrate on taking as big gulps as i can without looking unsightly it's funny how one thing leads to another, though. It feels like a snowball has begun to start rolling. Meeting new and interesting people since I started here. It might have taken a couple of months, but maybe I will manage to find some new friends. Yeah, maybe. I sure know how it goes. You meet one person, and then another person, and then you meet their friends, and then you meet their, their, their friends, and then you end up being this long web of people that you know. With the weather turning worse and worse as the week went went on, the library seemed as good a, good a, good a place as any to spend some time before having lunch. Unfortunately, it looks like I wasn't the only one who had that idea. While the library here is bigger than my previous schools, it doesn't matter much when a large portion of the students are dumped inside. Well, my first choice would would have been using one of the computers. That's obviously out of the question. Worried about looking like a dork as I loiter about, I start walking slowly through the library. Thankfully, nobody pays much attention while I glance from side side for an empty table or desk. The students who are actually studying seem to be outnumbered by those gossiping with friends or catching up on sleep. It's only in a far corner of the room that I catch a familiar face, albeit not necessarily a welcome one. To be Ellie, right? Yeah. Ellen sits hunched over a thick textbook, occasionally scribbling onto the small notebook besides it, as her finger starts every so often in one important part to or another. It's hard to tell if she's annoying, annoyed or just studying hard. I consider leaving Ellen to her studying and braving the weather outside before she rubs her temple and looks down mournfully at her notebook. That pose is all too familiar for any student. I feel a little bad for her given the vending machine problem and how she wound up with Caprice stuck on her. She doesn't seem to have very good luck. She might not be the friendliest person, but if I could help her a bit. By the way, how the fuck did she get the vending machine open? It's kind of something I would, I hope that they come back to you later. With Wallace's words weighing in my mind, I grimace and accept my fate as I begin one Walking to the otherwise empty table. She looks up and catches my eyes as I come near, so I guess I'm committed to this now. Uh, afternoon. My existence has been noted, and I don't think that that could sound any more perfunctional. 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 Uh, Prefunctionatory. But at least she isn't shooing me away. Setting my bag besides my chair as I take a step, I pull out my phone and check for any missed messages and switch it to silence before placing it on the table before me. Hi, surprised you're not in the art room. I don't live there, you know. Wouldn't it be more private than here, though? She lets out a long, miserable groan as her head sinks. <laughs> Horribly difficult to work out what that means. Priest wouldn't stop bugging me to join her drawing for some stupid thing. <laughs> Some stupid theme. Uh, what was that? What was it? I wasn't really listening. Christmas. I wasn't really listening. Christmas scenes. Uh, or something. 
She's barely even listening to me as she tries to wave, wave me off. Caprice is probably scurrying about campus as we speak, hoping for me to join her as a drawing partner. Uh, what are you studying? Math. It's been kicking my ass, so I need to get my head around it for these stupid gen ed classes. <clears throat> Ellen barely lifts her head up from the notebook as she speaks, looking over the table at her work, various practice equations covered cover the notebook's pages i have to admit i do admire um ellen's drive i was just going to pass some time in the library reading but seeing her working away has made me feel a little guilty you any good at this stuff you any good at this stuff math well i ended up skipping the gen ed class thanks to my placement exam results <laughs> math well i'm a god at it I was actually I was actually always really really good at math. I'm just lazy. I pride myself in my in, in, in my ability to not do simple math but do complicated math. <laughs> well, I ended up skipping the genetic. Actually, now that I think about it, I probably can't do math anymore because my brain is dumb. Someone spent their time studying like a good little teacher's pet. <clears throat> yep, that's me. Nothing like that. Math and science are easy enough, so I end up coasting along. I need to learn how to study now that I'm here. <clears throat> Ellen's, nice, Ellen's eyes narrow. Maybe she wasn't exaggerating about her skills after having such an easy time in high school. It's easy to forget I'm the old one out here. Of course, I'd put my foot in my mouth just as I was starting to break the ice with it. <clears throat> I mean, um, if you want, I can have a, uh, I can have a look at your work. It's hardly enthusiastic, but shrugs and moves herself a little out of the way. My curiosity has gotten the better of me. Coming around the table and looking at the notepad, notebook from behind her, I take a gander at her note so far. <clears throat> at least this is easy to read, given her immaculate handwriting. The more I check over the, her notes, though, the more the corners of my mouth drag down. <laughs> <clears throat> That's maybe supposed to be a slope. That might have been cosine. I think that right there is a quadratic equation. I don't know what the fuck is going on in that paper. It's all too blurry to see. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Why am I hyper today? I should be saving this energy for my stream. But I'm doing it for you guys. Because I love you guys just as much. Yeah. She's done a good job of showing her process in the full couple of questions. Covering expressions look right. Uh, covering expressions look right at, at a glance when it comes to polyno polynomials. However, the next two have odd leaps of logic. While the last man me meanders off into the wilderness. I realize I should say something to express how she's done so far, but the window of time to say something even mildly positive to soften the blow has long since passed. So it's like that, huh? You got some of it right. <laughs> that didn't help. Polynomials do seem to trip a lot of people up, so she isn't catastrophically bad at this. So considering this first semester of gen ed sub subjects is mostly reviewing what we did in high school, it isn't a promising start. Mind if I scribble on this a bit? Knock yourself out. I reach over to grab my pen from the other side of the table before hunching, hunching over her book and jolting down a couple of notes. First up are a few pointers to where the first two polynomials were awry, being taken a parallel crack at the worst of them. I never did polynomials. Pausing for a moment, actually, maybe I did. Pausing for a moment, halfway to check the logic of what I'm doing, I'm satisfied I'm on the right track as I finish it off. The results look about right. Ellen flips over the textbook page on cue to check my answer. Looking a little dubious as she does, but vindicated by the matching results, I feel a good bit of res relief that at not making a fool of myself in front of her. At least one of us has has a head for this stuff. At least one of us has a head for this stuff. <clears throat> Does it make more sense to you now? 
She takes a thorough look at my scribbles on her notebook. I bust four as she tries to pick up the reasoning. I can't help but glance between my notes and Ellen as she looks over them. <laughs> if she didn't project an aura of wanting to be left alone all the time, just her looks and her style would probably attract people. She's very beautiful. I think so. You don't sound too sure. <laughs> This is, this is about as confident as I ever get with math, so don't worry. I'll have to repay you some time. Talking, uh, taking that as confirmation that my job is done, I return to my seat as Ellen leans back in her chair. It's nothing really. You should ask your professor, though. If you're not confident in doing polynomials, need to ask them doesn't mean that I want to. All right. Given how frank she is, I guess this must be a matter of pride than just shyness. Maybe that's where her stubbornness comes from. Why are you wasting your time here with me anyway? Don't you have some friends to do friend things with? Actually, no, I don't have friends. I only really know you and Caprice. Met Wallace the other day, actually. So that brat was trying to drag him into the club too. Wallace may think it might be a good experience for her, but Ellen's disdain for Caprice is going to be hard to overcome. Hearing my phone vibrating on the table, I quickly pick it up to see who's messaging me. I quickly force myself to keep a poker face as the name comes into view. She must have given up on art out of loneliness if Ellen's avoiding her, and I'm here. I'm not terribly hungry, but I should probably get at least a sandwich or something from the cafeteria before class begins. Big news, Allie. Yay, yeah, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Tell you later in bio. Hey, want to grab something at cafeteria? Quickly typing in an agreement to meet there, I locked the phone once more. I might go grab lunch. Want to come? Sorry, I already ate. Thanks for the offer, though. She's already back to con concentrating on her textbook as she mumbles the reply. Probably for the best, anyway. Giving it quiet for a while, I grab my bag and put my phone back inside. Uh. As I put it over my shoulder, though, Ellen looks up. By the way, I don't blame you for any of this stuff Caprice is pushing. Is pulling. Pushing. You seem alright. So I'm alright. Perhaps I should accept that as praise coming from here. Glad for our meeting having been somewhat stressful, I wave goodbye and head out towards the cafeteria. The cafeteria is a little less fun than the library. The stocks of food behind the counter are already running low on all the usual student fa uh, favorites. With the line for food moving quickly, I manage to grab the last set of sandwiches and move on. It was Caprice. Scanning about, I noticed Caprice sipping her juice, an empty tray before her. She sure eats fast. Glad for the company, either way, I walk over and take a seat at her table. Hey, Allie. Long time no see. We saw each other yesterday. How's everything going? How are your classes? Not too bad. It's all familiar enough right now. Not that everyone's doing as well as I am, as I unpack my sandwich and begin to nibble. My thoughts turn to the woman in the library. I feel a little sorry for her. Ellen's struggling reminded me that I have it easier than some at times. Then there's the matter of her at, at the club, in the club. Setting my food back down, I decide to tackle this more directly than usual. If Ellen can be so direct with others, then so can I. I was thinking, you meant for me to meet Ellen last week, didn't you? She's fun, isn't she? Something like that. Something like that. The, that painting of the girl in the water was really pretty. She's really good, huh? No wonder the other art club tried to grab her. About that. Well, more about Ellen. I'm not sure it's a good idea to be forcing people into this club. I know you're excited to get things started, but just because her art's good doesn't mean she wants to be in, in a club. You sound like you're not really into it yourself. She's sharper than I give her credit for. Catching all, caught off guard. I have to stop and think as she sips the last bit, of, the last of her cheers. 
The sucking sound as she makes sure to get every last drop doesn't help. I can't say I'm enthusiastic about this. Ellen studying is exactly what I need to be doing. At least I waste my scholarship. On the other hand, Caprice is my only friend right now, and I do enjoy spending time with her. As she puts down her drink with a satisfied breath, I know my, I know my answer. I can make time for it. I can make time for it. He gives a comically big sigh, missing my hesitation entirely. If this ends up being only being between a couple of us, maybe it won't be too bad, as long as it not a whole bunch of people getting involved. I want to do this for her sake. As well, you know, Ellen looks kind of lonely all by herself in that room. Well, I didn't consider that Caprice was coming at it from that angle. It makes me think a little better of her. What she says makes her makes me reconsider Ellen's actions in another light as well. I wonder how much of her reluctance about this isn't due to Caprice herself, but rather her feeling used by the other uh, club for her art. Seeing that kind of talent makes you kind of envious though, right? Well, I just drew a bit in high school for fun. I don't think I could even manage something beautiful like that. We keep chatting, but Caprice's earlier words stick firmly in my mind. We may meet every school day and talk quite a lot. At least she does. But I realize just how little I really know her in spite of that. Maybe spending more time together wouldn't be so bad after all. Alright, uh, is that a good transition to end the video? Yes, it is. I over. I did not realize how much time we I used up. Holy fuck! All right, guys. Um, you guys need to. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You guys need to comment, rate, subscribe, do all that cool stuff, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace. Also, I have Patreon. If you uh, watched any of my other hentai related videos. And you want to watch the uncensored version of them then head over to patreon i have them on my least amount of tier i have what fucking number of tiers do i have I have a five dollar tier a ten dollar tier a fifteen dollar tier and a twenty dollar tier i think or fifty to fifty dollar tier i don't know i don't know what the fuck numbers i have i have tiers and they're numbered with money <laughs> Also, here's another thing I should shout out. I am actually on Fiverr. I don't put this in my YouTube videos because I don't feel it necessary to. But if you, but I haven't been able to get much luck on doing Fiverr so far. But if you're looking for a YouTube editor, someone who really wants to edit your videos, uh, you can hire me on Fiverr. I, I maybe I'll put the link in the description. I don't know. Um, I'm Manuel Perez. I don't. I, how do you look up people on the Fiverr? How do you do that? Anyways, never mind. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I hope you guys. Uh, um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next video. Peace. <laughs>